after 51 years, uh, you still seem to have the enthusiasm to look to the future uh, instead of putting the feet up and uh, relaxing. And uh, how do you maintain that enthusiasm? Well, I, I, I you know, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm passionate about the industry. Uh, I was asked earlier when I first flew in an airplane when I was a baby. I've been flying ever since. I enjoy the the buzz of the business. Um, I like the fertility of the business for innovation, for um, uh, whatever else that drives us, whether it be the airports, etc., etc. There's a lot of work to do, an awful lot of work to do. Uh, we talk about airports, we talk about mass markets, we talk about price points for mass markets, oil, etc. It's a real buzz there. Um, in, in Emirates, of course, because we are so prolific in our brand and our presence in many markets, uh, we have to keep a very careful eye on what the politics of a particular market is doing, Brazil, Australia, New Zealand, or whatever. We're plugged into all of that. That makes life hugely interesting to the people who work with me and are coming behind me, of course. Um, as far as I'm concerned, my mind remains <laughs> as active as it was. Uh, my body's not doing so well, I have to be part of this. Um, but in the end, I'll, I'll, uh, I hope I instill in, the, in the, the group of people who work with me and are coming behind them, um, that, that need to keep engaged, keep on looking for the opportunities, driving the opportunities, driving innovation and product, adopting everything. Look around you, keep your radar going. What's going on in automotive? What's going on in power and utilities? What's going on in consumer electronics? What is actually happening out there that you can cross over into our businesses, which informs you as to how your product needs to be exercised and the changing nature of demand. As people like me pass away and you've got a younger generation who are into their hugely computer literate, hugely technology literate, how are you going to adapt your range of products uh, to suit this? In the end, you're still having to go on a tube, unless we've got some kind of quantum physics which transposes our bodies one side of the planet to the other, we're still going to be travelling by air. That is not going to stop. Except that, that is not going to stop. Um, however difficult it is to decarbonise our industry, we've got huge sustainability issues going on out there, which we have to deal with. Um, but is demand for air travel going to go? No, the, the, the global population continues to grow. It hasn't shrunk, it's not diminishing in its rate of increase. Uh, so there will always be that. People will always want to travel. Uh, they want to exercise their right to travel, they want to be able to do that, which is why I think you see a little bit of what we call revenge travel. I don't subscribe to the revenge travel view, but I think people are always wanting to take advantage of what life offers them. If it's affordable, they're definitely going to go after it. The, the airline business is an affordable product, and it will continue to be that way. I'm not talking about elitism, I'm not talking about sustainability. After all, if you go from Dublin to Frankfurt for seven euros on Ryanair, if the oil price goes up by 50%, it becomes 10 euros. <laughs> really? I mean, my breakfast here this morning was 50 euros. I'm particularly ashamed to announce. Um, <laughs> but <coughs> I could have had the continental breakfast for 30 euros. So really, you know, this, this kind of price point, the incipient demand for travel, certainly in the low-cost models, is not going to be affected that. Governments have got their evil eye on us. And they want to extract as more value out of us than they do uh, that we do, and we have to, to, to deal with that in a friendly manner. That's the last. There's so many areas I could touch upon.